So I think we are on time, so we can uh, start this uh, webinar. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, we are going to uh, present, um, John is going to present uh, this, uh, uh, this very interesting um, presentation on uh, developing an index to assess global coverage with key health services using antenatal care coverage. Uh, John um, Ataguba uh, is an associate professor and the director of the Health Economics Unit at the University of Cape Town. He's a deputy director for the African Health Economics and Policy Association. And his research focuses on applied microeconomics, including health inequality, health financing, health economics methodology design, and economics of aging. So welcome everybody again. Uh, some um, rules, uh, you see that uh, we have, um, you have two ways of, of, of asking us questions or making comments. We prefer that you use the Q&A chat box, um, box to, to post questions uh, on the seminar and uh, the questions will be answered at the end. So, of course, if you have any comments, uh, you can you can use the, the chat box. But uh, uh, it's better if you use the Q and A um, uh, option to to post your questions. So, um, John, uh, you can you can go ahead and start. Um, the, please try to to stick your presentation to thirty minutes, so we have question uh, time for questions or comments at the end. Thank you very much, Carmen. Um, thanks, uh, everyone who's here um, listening and watching. Um, I will be presenting um, the methodology that um, I designed to, to assess coverage with um, key health services. I, in this particular presentation, I focus on um, assessing antenatal care services. Um, and antenatal care services are not new to everyone. Um, it's just a special set of maternal health care um, services. Um, I'll try to uh, keep to time as um, I've been instructed. Um, so you will see um, quickly that um, you may want to um, look in depth into the paper, um, which has been published a couple of years ago, um, and it was in the PLOS One uh, journal. So you can take a moment to take a look at it, um, you can take a snapshot, or um, I'll come back to it later anyway. Great, so um, this is basically um, the outline of our presentation. I'll move quickly um, through it. I'll give motivation overview of um, key issues um, we need to look at, and also look at the objectives of um, this particular um, assessment. Um, we look at the new methodology for assessing um, service coverage using ANC. And um, I tried to apply this methodology empirically, um, and we conclude. Um, in terms of motivation, um, we know that access to NC um, is of global concern. Um, and the reason behind that is um, maternal health um, determines a lot in terms of um, health, even within the family and also for, for children. Um, and in developing countries, this is really um, key. So we need to improve maternal health indicators to be able to have a healthy family and that will uh, have healthy kids, um, of course. Um, during the era uh, of the SDG, of the MDGs, before the SDGs, uh, maternal child health indicators were really um, pronounced. Um, now for the SDGs, we have um, SDG three that focuses on health, um, which is basically about good health and well-being. Um, has one of its indicators as um, uh, attaining. Um, at least 70 percent uh, or 70 per 100,000 live births um, or less in terms of maternal mortality ratio by 2030 um, or reducing um, neonatal mortality by um, at least as low as 12 per um, 1,000 live births again by 2030. And we know clearly that antenatal care period is really a very critical period um, for intervening. That's a period when a lot of mothers use health services and you can target services to them um, during that period. Um, so it's a very vital period for health of kids 
and also well-being of the mother and the family, like I said. Um, and I introduced earlier that um, the era of the MDGs that ended in 2015, uh, between 1990 and 2015, um, looked at um, one of the indicators, which is um, uh, at, at least um, women attaining at least four ANC visits before um, uh, delivery. Um, we know globally that um, Africa bears a very uh, large body of deaths, and that also includes maternal deaths as well. Um, you could take a look at this. You see that uh, uh, maternal mortality ratio is really high. It's highest in Africa compared to every other region you find on that um, um, chart there. You will see we have about 525 uh, deaths per 100,000 live births in Africa compared to 41 in Western Pacific, for example, um, and very negligible amounts in Europe. Um, so you would see um, that there is also um, disparity in, in Africa between countries. Um, countries um, such as South Sudan, Chad, um, performing very, very poorly compared to countries like um, Seychelles, um, Algeria, South Africa, for example. And that's pretty much the same when we look at neonatal mortality. Um, Africa, again, bears the largest body of uh, neonates, death from um, uh, neonate deaths. And um, it's about, in Africa, it's about 27 deaths per 1,000 live births, compared to, again, um, less than five in, in Europe. Um, again, disparity exists between countries and even within countries. But you would see again the usual suspects here: um, Central African Republic, Sudan, Nigeria, and Guinea-Bissau uh, leading uh, the trail there. And um, countries like um, uh, South Africa, as I said earlier, Seychelles, uh, uh, Mauritius, etc., have uh, very low um, neonatal deaths. Now, um, when we come to ANC visits, which is antenatal care visits. Previously, before 2016, WHO recommends that um, pregnant women should have a minimum of four ANC visits um, before delivery. Uh, and that, of course, has to be spaced, not just having four visits in four <laughs> consecutive days. Um, but it's been shown that having four um, visits may not be sufficient, um, especially um, at some key points that um, certain things might be missed. Um, that can be addressed um, cost effectively. And uh, by 2016, the new recommendation came out from the WHO that we expect that pregnant women should have um, about eight contacts. And the contacts could also include visiting um, uh, your GP for routine checkups. It could be for um, very minor ailment, for example. But such contacts have to happen because if you're pregnant and you have that contact, uh, the health uh, provider would, of course, pick up the pregnancy uh, as well. And there is the correlation between having ANC visit and the health of, of, of kids or of um, the child to be born. Um, so it's important um, to have um, contact with the health provider to be able to pick up um, any complications if there are. Um, and we, we also know um, that whilst the WHO has recommended at least um, eight um, contacts um, recently, um, such um, contacts, again, have to be spaced, um, not just having eight contacts within a month or within three days. Um, and the spacing that was recommended by WHO is um, what you see on the, on the screen there. Um, I wouldn't delve into reasons why um, these have been um, graded that way. Great, um, but that's minimum. You could have more than that, um, nothing hurts. And so why, why do we really need um, to revise the index uh, for antenatal care coverage? Um, if you take a look at what exists previously, it's having at least four ENC visits. Um, so what that means is if a woman has two visits um, or if the proportion of women with two visits is so high and you're able to move the proportion to maybe um, maybe previously you have a proportion with two visits at maybe 40%. And uh, for some reasons, there were interventions that raised that to about 50%. Um, you will not be able to capture that in the ANC um, four plus indicators because you've not been able to achieve 
um, at least for ANC visit. In economics, we call it a switch. Um, it only switches when you move to the region of at least four ANC visits. So if you increase the proportion of women with three ANC visits, which is very substantial, it's not captured. So it means if a country puts in thousands or millions of dollars into interventions to increase ANC coverage, the only time when such um, um, injection of money will be um, recorded is when you have at least four ANC visits. But again, how then do you monitor progress over time? It's a key challenge, and that's where um, this new methodology um, comes in. That we need to be sensitive to policies that increase the proportion of women that have attained at least be, probably between two and three ANC visits. In this case, if you fix the minimum at four ANC visits. Um, and that is compatible with the notion of progressive realization of um, either rights or progressive realization of access to health services, which is enshrined within the new um, SDG debate. And of course, enshrined again in the uh, move towards universal health coverage. Um, and also the previous, um, having at least four ANC visits doesn't tell us much about quality of ANC visits. Um, so we, we found in countries like Sierra Leone on the continent of Africa, for example, with a very high um, coverage of at least four ANC visits, but we have a very high maternal mortality ratio, which I've just shown you. Um, so there is some kind of um, no correlation in that case. And the reason we found was um, poor quality of um, antenatal care services. Um, so the previous um, index or um, ratio would not capture such. Um, so it's important to revise that. So the focus of the paper basically is to develop a very simple and easily understood index by policymakers, researchers, and uh, users um, that would take into account the spectrum of ANC coverage, um, not just looking at having a minimum of four, but you look at the whole distribution of ANC visits by women. Um, and we can extend that index to be able to account for um, quality of uh, ANC services that women receive, which is very important in the context of uh, progressive realization as well as access to quality health services, which is um, pushed by um, the move for um, universal health coverage. So let me quickly um, explain this. I, I would explain this in a very simple uh, language for everyone who perhaps might be um, challenged with um, trying to understand some complex mathematics. So it's very simple. Um, so now let's imagine we, we have, um, we're able to figure out the percentage of women with at least four ANC visits. And in this case, it's perhaps about 38%. At least 38% of women have at least four ANC visits. It could be four, five, six, seven, but at least four ANC visits. Again, in this scenario, that same country, we have um, about 58% of women with at least three ANC visits. That also includes the proportion with at least four ANC visits. And that's why it's usually higher. Um, so the um, chart you see here, these white bars can only increase but cannot decrease. It could either remain the same or it increases over time because it's what we call cumulative. It cumulates um, with time. Um, so here we have about 90% or 85% of um, women attaining at least one ANC visit. So it means that about 15% um, or thereabout had not gotten any ANC visit before delivery, which is uh, problematic. So the whole idea behind this index is rather than looking at um, the proportion with at least four ANC visit, which will be here in this case, maybe about 38% or 35%, we want an index that captures all this. And uh, what I did here is I have two um, portions. One is shaded, the A portion is shaded, and the B portion is unshaded. Um, the shaded portion, um, basically marks out what I um, term the gap that needs to be filled. We need to fill that gap. Um, and the sh unshaded portion is, um, you could look at it as attainment. Um, and then the shaded portion is a gap that needs to be filled. We need to basically get rid of that shaded portion. And the only way to get rid of that shaded portion is to move the proportion of women um, with um, at least four ANC visit or three or whatever. Um, and then that portion becomes um, unshaded. So the index, simply put, is just a ratio of this unshaded portion um, compared to the entire um, rectangle. So the, the unshaded portion as a ratio of the entire 
um, area of, of um, the rectangle gives us that index. And then the gap is just the complement. That is, you basically take out the computed index from one and you get a gap. Alternatively, is a shaded portion as a ratio of the entire um, area of the rectangle. Um, and um, the beauty of this is it's complementary in the sense that you add the index, the coverage of the index and the gap, you get one. Great. Um, so the reason why this is very important, I would show this to, um, to, to um, viewers so that you could easily pick this out. Um, you will notice that in this example I'm giving, we have about four countries. Let's just take a quick example that these um, represent four different countries, hypothetical countries, okay? And in this case, we have 49% of women um, in all the countries having at least four ANC visits. And that's what we have here. So if you notice in panel A, panel A is saying, though we have 49% of women attaining four in, at least four ANC visits, um, the rest have at least three ANC visits. So um, it tells us that um, it, it, if you take a look at it, it's a better distribution than, uh, for example, um, any of the others. And then panel B is saying um, pretty much similar to what I just showed you um, earlier. So I wouldn't go into that. But panel C is that 49% of women had at least four NC visits. The rest had no other visits. So it's either you have more than four or zero. Um, and again, if you look at the previous indicator that's been used by WHO, it just gives you this, these four countries have the same coverage rate of ANC services. But one country is, of course, the best relatively compared um, to the rest. Um, so if you quickly take a look at that, it's not easy to see that whilst we have 49% coverage with at least four ANC visits, um, ANC coverage is better in panel A and worst in panel um, C, like we've just seen. And the reason is obvious, which I quickly um, alluded to. Great. Um, these nuances are ignored when you look at the four, having at least four NCVC. This is just a very uh, simple illustration for you to quickly see the need um, for us to revise um, the index that's been used by WHO. I'm going to skip through this, likely because we have perhaps in the audience people who might um, struggle to follow the kind of um, um, derivation here. But basically the index you've seen here is the same as that area that I was trying to uh, mention earlier. Because we cannot compute the area directly, we need to find a formula to compute that, that particular area when we have um, what we call secondary data. Um, so this is a simpler way, an alternative computation method um, for you to understand. Um, so this is some kind of weighted average of uh, the number of ANC services that um, women receive. Again, I'll skip this um, for a non-technical non -technical audience, but you're happy to take a look at the, the paper and its appendices for um, uh, annexes to, to figure out how um, to do this. But I'm happy to chat more about this if it comes up during um, question and answer. Now to interpret um, the, the index, like I said, it ranges, the, the summation of the two indices is one basically. Um, so if you reduce the gap, you're increasing coverage. If you increase the coverage, you're reducing the gap. And if, if the gap is increasing, then it means the coverage is dropping. Um, and that's um, a very useful um, message to pass on to policymakers. So each of the indices um, will range from um, zero to one, but the complement is one. Um, so when the index of coverage is equal to zero, it by implication means that the gap is one. Uh, it, there is no coverage at all. And um, when the index tends becomes one, then it basically means that the gap is zero. There's no, no gap to be filled. And that's where we want to go. We want to move countries to um, a place where the index is equal to, to one. So for progressive realization, we want to as much as possible minimize the gaps and move countries towards I, um, the index I being equal to one. Um, so again, that index I mentioned can be generalized to account for quality. Again, I won't go in depth into how this is done because of the audience, uh, but what it means is that we can account for the quality of each ENC service that a woman receives, not just uh, each, each visit or each contact. We need to assess the quality of each contact and build that into the model to assess the coverage. 
um, and that is done using the formula you see. Uh, you see there. it's pretty much the same as just adjusting um, for quality. There are many axioms as economists that we need to take our indices through, um, but uh, I wouldn't bore you with them. Just for you to see that a couple of axioms or what we call properties that the index um, should have. Um, one is um, the symmetry or an anonymity axiom, which basically um, it's about having a new distribution that mimics the previous distribution, but it's, it's not something to um, worry about. The one I want you to um, uh, pay a, uh, close attention to is um, the um, focus axiom, um, which is very important. Focus axiom is we want to focus on what matters and every other thing that doesn't matter, whatever happens there is irrelevant in the equation. So for example, if we fix a minimum of um, the minimum at five, Okay, or four, which uh, let me use the old one. If we fix the minimum at four, it means that if a woman should get 90 ANC visit, it shouldn't change the in index. We shouldn't be worried about a woman who gets 90 or 80 or 60 or 12. Or, um, we should be worried so much about people who are um, far below um, the minimum uh, that is required for a healthy um, um, birth. Great. Then the other one is what we call the sub. Um, I'll skip this, um, is um, decomposition by subgroups. Uh, decomposition by subgroups is basically um, one that allows us to say, well, let's know what's happening in the rural area compared to the urban. Let's know what's happening in the poorest quintile compared to the richest. Let's know what's happening in the northern region compared to the southern, compared to the mid, mid region, for example. Um, and that is very important for policy and for equity. Um, so it's not just looking at the overall index, but the index is, is flexible to allow you to see what's happening across the country or the region, um, whichever applies applies to you. So you can sum up the index. Um, you can create a weighted average of the index by subgroups to get the, the main index. So in terms of empirical application, um, I applied this method to um, data from Uganda um, as a start. Um, Uganda is one of the countries in Africa with, of course, a relatively high um, maternal mortality um, and, of course, uh, a relatively low um, ANC coverage as well compared to um, we saw for uh, South Africa, um, Ghana, for example. And um, what we found um, is just basically um, that if you look at the index, uh, the last one I'm just showing you, um, Uganda has about, if you look at having at least four NC visits, about 60% um, of, the of the of women had at least four NC visits. Um, but the new index is about 0 0.854. It's not, it's not percentage but you can interpret it as some sort of coverage between zero and one. If you want to interpret it as percentage, you may, but it's not originally designed as a percentage, but it kind of looks like a percentage because it adds up to one or a hundred. Um, so the gap for um, Uganda to fill in this case is about um, 0 0.146, 0 0.15, for example. Um, and uh, we tried to decompose that result by urban rural, and you would see clearly um, that in, in the context of Uganda, the rural area had a very high in, uh, index of um, the gap uh, compared to um, the urban area. And of course, by the flip side is that urban areas tend to have um, high um, coverage rates compared to um, rural areas. Same with wealthier um, um, quintiles compared to poorer quintiles. Um, very educated women, of course, as, as expected, tend to have more ENC visit or coverage than least uh, educated women. Um, and um, again, we try to compare these by um, different countries. Um, so this ranking you see here is not in itself um, suggestive that one country is better than the other, likely because you will notice the countries have different data points. And some in 2016, some in 13, and so, some in 14, etc. So it's not um, neatly comparable, but you can loosely compare um, the countries um, using the, the data. 
So what we found here is that though correlations exist between the previous having four ANC visits, at least four ANC visits and the new ranking, there are significant differences. And these differences are mainly within the middle of the distribution at the tail ends of the distribution, this correlation uh, tends to be high. But by the time you get to the middle of the distribution, the, the, uh, kind of, there is nuance um, there. And the nuances can be very um, um, obvious as you go closer and closer to the middle. Um, for example, uh, some countries could have a better new um, ranking, but very poor ANC, um, the previous ranking. And we saw, for example, that Rwanda had a very poor ANC uh, four plus uh, ranking, but has a very high, relatively high um, ranking, likely because Rwanda has made tremendous efforts to move countries and uh, people from zero to two to three, uh, but they've not reached four yet. Um, so you cannot compare uh, that to a country where um, they've not made that kind of uh, significant progress. And this is what this method allows us to, do, to tease out. Again, on the other side, you could have countries with similar um, ANC plus uh, for at least four ANC visits, uh, but um, very different ranking. And that is clear in context of um, Nigeria, for example. Um, Nigeria kind of um, went um, a little bit higher in terms of ranking when you apply the new ranking compared to what, what it was before um, and many others as well. So to quickly conclude, I've got about three, four minutes to allow for um, enough time for questions. We really need new measures or indices to assess um, equitable progress. Not, so not just progress, but equitable progress and progress that we could um, say there is uh, move to gradual, that we can also catch gradual moves as countries get closer and closer to universalism. Um, so progressive realization of service coverage is therefore an important consideration um, especially for indicators that have been or that have been proposed to be used within um, the universal health coverage debate. In this example, what we've just seen is that um, ANC, um, having at least four ANC visits alone um, cannot be useful to assess um, progress in ANC service, uh, service coverage as that particular index misses um, to, very, uh, to a great extent. Um, you've seen that. Um, improvements that countries make, I gave you an example of Rwanda, improvements that a country is making to increase ANC service coverage, um, but they've not reached that switching point um, um, yet, um, especially where women have not reached uh, the minimum, which generates a switch. Um, in Africa, we know that the proportion of women that have attained at least four ANC visits, uh, attaining uh, less than four ANC visits remain really, really um, high. Um, we have, for example, in Ethiopia, close to 70% of women have not had up to four ANC visits. Um, and in Nigeria, for example, about 50%, again, not having up to four ANC visits. And um, Burundi is also one, Niger, for example, is one. And we have seen that women with um, uh, very few ANC visits are more likely to come from um, the poor, um, the uneducated, people living in rural areas, um, et cetera. Um, so it means therefore that if countries are making efforts to move people um, gradually, the people we miss are the poor. Um, and that's where policy usually um, applies. We want to move the poor from a very low level to a high level, but if you put, pump in money and you're moving them gradually, you never catch them until you reach that switching point. Um, so therefore, using the new index provides an avenue to assess progressive realization of access to maternal health services using ANC in this case. Um, and of course, there is need to address other issues, which I didn't talk about in terms of timing of ANC visits. There's a huge difference between having your first ANC visit in the first trimester compared to having your first ANC visit in the third third trimester, for example. Um, so you could have had four ANC visits, but all of them were in the third trimester. Um, it's, not, it's not a good distribution compared to having um, one spaced like the one I showed for the new model that WHO put out for eight contacts. Um, though I have not shown um, generalizing for ANC service coverage, uh, applying quality, likely because the data set I consider, which is a demographic and health survey uh, data sets, 
um, do not have um, sufficient um, indicators of quality. Uh, and that's why um, that they've not been considered. Uh, but there are debates around quality of services, which I'm not going, going into at the moment. And, and the related aspect is that delivery by a trained bed attendants can be predicted significantly by having a very high indicator uh, of um, coverage, um, every other thing being equal, of course. Um, as you women um, don't um, default to traditional practices that harm um, their unborn kids, for example, because women that receive high quality AM service, ANC services are more likely to return back to um, the facility um, to have a very a trained um, birth attendant um, attending um, to the birth. So with that, um, I would uh, want to thank you um, all for um, joining. And I also want to thank the National Research Foundation um, for funding this research. Um, thanking also the African Health Economics and Policy Association and, uh, and PEP. So thank you and over to you, um, Carmen. Thank you, John. That was very interesting. I'm sure the uh, attendees found uh, the presentation very useful and interesting. So uh, we still have no questions. Um, please, um, if you have any questions or even comments, uh, you know, ideas uh, about uh, how to move forward with this, um, uh, you can share them with us. I know sometimes it takes a couple of minutes for people to um, settle in and type in questions. So we're patient. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, now that's a comment. They're from, um, I don't know who that came from. Oh, from Jane. Um, this is great work, John, congratulations. Okay, other comments there. Um, thanks, John, for the presentation and hosting the from again. Um, Jean Vilna, Vilna, and it's a great job, John. Feel free. Um, comments, questions, mustn't be questions, it can be comments as well. And also mm -hmm. where you think this can be applicable um, in your context, let us know. Um, we're happy to take this forward. I think everyone seemed to be happy <laughs> to come in. Yes. <laughs> Aha, I see something coming in. I'm not sure. Okay, so I think it's a question um, there from Anthony. Um, great presentation. I see you borrowed the progressive realization model of socioeconomic rights. Do you also intend to apply the minimum core content of rights used by the South African judiciary? Great. Now, this is a question um, seems very, um, tilted towards law um, or um, ethics, uh, more, more, more of law. Um, Anthony, I think in terms of um, the minimum core contents, that is uh, very compatible uh, with the quality, the quality adjusted um, coverage that I was trying to um, talk to. Um, so it's not just a matter of having um, four ANC visits or ANC contact, but there is and there should be um, a set of minimum, um, the core minimum that has to be met in terms of quality. Um, I tried to allude to that, but because of time, I didn't go in depth into um, trying to disaggregate the issue of quality. Um, quality measures, there are many of them, many measures of quality, though it's controversial, uh, but it's something that um, I think is compatible with um, the, um, the minimum, uh, the core minimum or minimum core content of rights um, used by the South African judiciary, which I'm not 100% sure of, but I think it should be compatible with. Thanks. I see another uh, a comment there from James. This is great job, John. We will fresh data, uh, well, we will use fresh data to apply this uh, method. Um, thanks for your presentation. It's great. Um, there from Fontes. Um, again, from Anthony, thank you for the response.
hope I'm not missing anyone. If I am, so let me know. I'm thinking that if you don't have any, uh, like uh, a lot of questions, if you want to, you know, like uh, uh, spend a little bit more time on the things that you went uh, fast on, I don't know, that's uh, one of uh, one idea or um, we, can, we can give a little bit more time to, to the attendees to post if they have any questions. Um, and we can, we can, of course, finish sooner. Um, everybody's time is very valued these times, so. Yes, so while that is- To you, John. Um, Great, I think I would, I would maybe talk more on, on the axioms um, for people okay. who- Okay, we, um, we have one question. Um, okay, good. Uh, thanks for this expository presentation. How can this analysis be performed is, uh, if it's the, a specific software? to do so. Very interesting. Um, there is no specific software. Any software can be, uh, any standard statistical software can be used or econometric software can be used. Um, oh, sorry, question just disappeared. Okay, because it's gone to answer. Okay. Um, yeah. There is no specific um, software that can be used. Um, you can use data, you can use SPSS, you can use um, eViews, you can use R um, for these. And like I said, if you if you if you follow the um, formula very well, it's very easy to compute. It's a very very easy. Um, it, it looks complicated, like you see here, but it's very very easy to compute. Um, and the, this alternative method of computation is the easiest. Now that you've asked, let me quickly take you through this alternative method of computation, which is the easiest. Now the way it works is if you see the V star. The V star is the new V we want to com, com, um, to get out of the, the, the data set. Now the old V is the number of visits that a woman had, okay, before delivery of course. Now we, we give you VJ, which means your own visit if it is less than the minimum. So if you fix the minimum at, at four, if you had three visits, the V star will be three. But if you had 10 visits, your V star will be four because we'll give you the minimum. That's basically what that is saying. So you either get the minimum or you get your actual visit, depending on whether your visit is less than the minimum or equal to or greater than the minimum. So all you need to do is once you get that, you put this into this equation, which is very simple. It's just like a mean. So you sum up all the Vs for all the women and you divide that by the, what the minimum is. In, in this case, it's four multiplied by the number of women eight between 15 and 49 with a live birth, blah, 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 blah. You see how very simple it is to compute. Um, and of course the gap indicator is one minus that, whatever you get from here is one minus that. Um, unfortunately, this simple method doesn't allow you to incorporate the quality measure. And that is why this, me this method is a better, <laughs> it's a better one. Um, this one allows you to obtain what I just showed you, but the, to be able to incorporate quality measures this, this other one will help you. This, this one you see now will help you um, because it allows you to open up each visit as opposed to lumping up uh, visits um, together, if, the, if that makes sense. I think, I hope this answers um, um, your question. But if not, um, please do let me know. Uh, Chukwedo. Great. Um, if if there still explains how the index can be computed. Okay, okay, I, I've just explained. So thanks, um, Atmash. It was the same question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other question? Okay. If not, then I think um, I'll hand this back to you, Carmen, and then perhaps we can wrap up. Yeah, but maybe we can we can wrap up and uh, yeah. thank you everybody for joining this morning and our afternoon uh, and uh, thank you John for for this useful presentation um, and we hope to see you um, again in uh, our next uh, seminar which uh, will take place in two weeks uh, it will be a presentation by Veronica Amarante um, she will be presenting on gender differences in housework and income. Uh, for evidence for Latin America. It's a very different topic, but uh, in any case, uh, we hope that it's of interest of you. So have a good weekend and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.